are in a early model JK with an LS 5.3. The Aero Force gauge isn't plugged in because I've got torque plugged in. I do some logging on torque that is just easier for me on these test drives, so I tend to use that over the Aero Force gauge. In any event, the LS 5.3, especially with a 10 speed, is a phenomenal combination. I don't think it gets the credit that it deserves. I just drove this JK and it is a very hot day out. We're pushing not only triple digits, but in the teens today. And when temperatures are that high, it just puts a lot of stress on everything. But this LT 5.3 doesn't feel like it's under any stress. It's always in the gear it wants to be. The 10 speed is shifting butter smooth. This is a very enjoyable driving vehicle. In an earlier video, I said if I had to put a LT in one of my Jeeps, I'd probably go with the LT 5.3. Now, I've got a couple of Jeeps. I've got a JL, I've got a JK. I had two JKs. One had an LS. Well, they both have LSs on the JKs, and my GL has an LT 5.3. The LS 5.3 was a great motor in its day. In a light JK, I still think it's a viable combination. I have the original swap Motec did way back in 2008. It was a 2008 JKX, well, JKUX, it was a four door, had a hard top, not a whole lot of options, and we put an LH6 in it, which is basically like an LC9 without the variable valve timing. That Jeep has now turned over 250,000 miles. I don't know where it is, but I know it's still on the road. The LT 5.3 is more powerful than the LS 5.3. It's more powerful than the 5.7 Hemi non VVT. If I had to judge where it would be power wise, I would say it's somewhere between the 5.7 VVT Hemi and the 6.0 LS, but there's a caveat there, and that is the transmission. If you burden an old Hemi with a five speed, especially the earlier uh, 545 RFE, I would say the LT 5.3 would walk all over it. The LS 6.0 depends on kind of how you tune it. If you have the stock operating system, they're only putting out 330 horsepower. And with a six speed, I think the LT 5.3 would take it. Now, obviously, a lot of it is the technology we talked about. And I just did a video about how guys don't understand this technology. They don't understand what direct injection does, and continuous variable valve timing, and high compression. And it's critical to get these engines to perform the way they do. To take a little 5.3 engine and have it running up there, somewhere between a 6.0 and a 6.2 of the last generation of engines was no small feat. But I believe GM has done that. So why would I have an LT 5.3 in my Jeep? Well, my hot rod days are kind of over. Yeah, back in the 70s and 80s, I was at the drag track all the time. Did circle track racing. We had a super late out here at the track that we were very successful, won a lot of races with. Of course, with a small block Chevy. But now I have a family and things are a little bit different. So things like fuel economy, drivability, and all that come into play. It's interesting, I drove a Cam LS that was rumpity rumpity rump the other day. And it brought back memories of the old days where we built power, where we took 454s and 427s. I was always a Chevy guy. Yeah, I worked on Mopars and Fords, but for the most part, you had to work with the Chevys if you wanted the best bank for your buck. And we would put giant cams in them, and some of them we'd put roller cams in, and that would stabilize the idle a little bit. They were still blowing massive amounts of hydrocarbon. So they really weren't what I would consider the ultimate daily driver. But they sounded mean, and they were fast and all that. But today, you can pretty much get that same level of performance with an LT and perfect drivability. And for that matter, I'm an equal opportunity guy. The electric motors, you don't like the Teslas, they're extremely fast. Now, I don't think the electric motor is ready for prime time in an off-road vehicle, but the LT is kind of a step towards that because the way the LT works with the 10-speed transmission, it's making the power more seamless. It's making the power available to you more of the time. You don't have a narrow power band up at the top of the rain. You got an engine with a wide power band and you got a lot of gears to choose from. So it's approaching that electric motor feel. And Chrysler's done a pretty good job updating the Hemi, but it's still cast iron, it's lower compression, the transmission isn't as advanced. If you got into a LT 10 speed versus a Hemi 8 speed, you would notice a difference right away. You would notice the power delivery on the LT is a lot different. The power delivery is pretty much linear from off idle to about four or 5,000 RPM with the LT. And when you combine it with a 10 speed, there's just power there all the time. The Hemi is more like the older hot rods where you get a little bit of rump, 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 but not too much. You know, you get a little rumble and then you get on and it's a little bit soft. And then two, 3,000 RPM, that power starts coming in. Four or 5,000 RPM is really pulling hard. And they're quick motors, they're powerful engines, but it's just a whole different ball game. The LT, you pull up on a drive-through and the guy thinks you got a V6. 
you can't hear nothing, you're idling at 450 RPM with your air conditioning on, but when you get on it, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So let's get back to the LT 5.3. Early in this year, we sold a lot of L83s. We were buying L83s that came off the production line as production engines, which means they were complete. They had intakes, they had fuel rails, injected, they just had everything. Unfortunately, GM evolved into the L82, which you think they would have evolved into the L84, which they did eventually, but first came the L82. The L82 is essentially an L83 with a different accessory drive to accept a uh, power steering pump, from what I understand. So the L83 is kind of dried up. So we had a dry patch there for the L83 for a few months, but surprise, surprise, the L82s became available. So we're using the L82s now. Prices have gone up. There's nothing we can do about that. The price on cores for transmissions have gone up. The price of the transmissions have gone up. I understand GM raised most of their GM performance parts 5% in July. So the prices are going up. We cannot hold the same prices that we had a year ago, two years ago. Boy, the days of us doing $14,000 conversions with the LS 5.3 are over. Our swaps now are going to be starting at over $20,000. But if you consider what you're getting, and let's just take an LT 6.2, like the LT1. Yes, it's just over $30,000, but that's still less than most of the Hemi conversions. And what you're getting is a state-of-the-art powertrain, high compression, direct injection, 10-speed adaptive transmission. There's just no comparison. And you're getting it for less money. And GM has always been about that. The GM has not always made the best vehicles, but as far as the powertrain goes, I think we can argue that bang for your buck, GM has made the best powertrains. I like a lot of the Ford engines. I like a lot of the Chrysler engines. I'm a Mopar guy myself. And I will say that Ford did come out with a lot of the technology that GM is now using. In fact, I hear that the LS has a lot of the old 351 Ford technology in it, like the firing order, the skirted block. And of course, Ford was one of the pioneers of direct injection back in the 1970s. So let's not take anything away from those other companies. It's just GM takes these powertrains and cranks them out by the million and makes this technology affordable and available to us. Nobody knows what the future of the V8 is going to be with Chrysler. Being owned by the Europeans, they're really big into small displacement, high performance engines, turbochargers, overhead cams, and all that stuff. And I think that's the direction that they want to go in. I know GM is pulling out all the stops to keep the, the V8 available to us. Not only multiple displacement, but dynamic fuel management, so we go down to a two-cylinder. And let me say, I've got a Denali in 2017, and it is a big, heavy vehicle. I'm going to say when we have that thing fully loaded, we're 7,000 pounds, and we're going 80 miles an hour in Idaho and Wyoming and in the mountains of Utah, and that there's nothing like that feel of a 6.2 large displacement engine pulling you effortlessly with no stress. Having a turbocharged engine or a small displacement high-tech V6 screaming is not what I want. So I will always pick a low-stressed V8, normally aspirated, and there, there's a place for the supercharged engines, but the normally aspirated V8 has always been my choice and always will be my choice. So what GM is doing is they're trying to maintain that V8 heritage and then add technology to it to make it compete with the smaller engines. Multiple displacement technology is trying to get the efficiencies of a smaller displacement engine, but still maintain the larger displacement. And it works. I would say in my Denali, even when I'm loaded down, I'm in the four cylinder mode 20, 30% of the time. Now, is it getting me massive mileage improvements? No, it's probably getting me one, two miles to the gallon at the most, I would say. But what is getting me mileage is the technology in that LT. The engine's 11 and a half to one compression. I can feel the camshaft phasing all over the place. The I've got an eight speed in my Denali, not the 10 speed, but I can feel that transmission working to keep me in the optimal gear all the time. And if I drive my Denali, even fully loaded, with any kind of care, I can push 20 miles to the gallon. Now, when it's not loaded, I can get 23 miles to the gallon. When it is loaded and I'm going 80 miles an hour, uh, I would say between 19.5 and 20 miles to the gallon is what I get. And if you think about that, that's pretty phenomenal. A fully loaded six or 7,000 pound vehicle with five people and as much stuff that a woman can pack into that vehicle. And we even run a, a trailer hitch luggage carrier. You weren't gonna do that 20 or 30 years ago with a small block Chevy, a big block Chevy, a small block Ford. You just weren't gonna see that kind of economy. Ford had some good engines like the five liter and the five eight, 
but when they went to the fuel injection in the mid 90s you were lucky to get 10 11 12 miles to the gallon in a bronco or an f-150 and some of you guys are going to say oh, i was getting 30 miles a gallon well that's great but on average i would say you were getting 30 to 40 percent less economy in those old technology engines than you're getting in these lts and it really bothers me when i hear guys say you're never going to get more than 10 miles to the gallon in a pimped out jk with a v8 and that might be what a lot of you hemi guys are seeing but i drive these jeeps all the time and i'm not seeing 20 miles to the gallon but i am seeing 13 to 15 on average 16 if i really try and a lot of it depends on the jeep what tires do you have because the friction in the tires has a lot to do with it especially if you don't air them up how much stuff do you got hanging off your jk light bars and high lift jacks and all that on average i can't say i ever see 10 miles to the gallon I'm, I'm up there in the 1450 now when i drive light jk's with these engines and if we take my jl for an example it's an eight speed lt 5.3 I'm seeing 20 plus miles to the gallon all the time. It's not hard to get 20 miles to the gallon. So the LT 5.3, in my opinion, is an underrated engine. And it doesn't cost dramatically less than an LT1, because if you think about it, pretty much you got the same amount of labor, almost the same amount of labor. You have almost the same amount of parts. Now we don't run the engine oil cooler standard on the 5.3. The 5.3 does have slightly less compression. I think it's 11 to one. You can run regular gas, but guys, I don't recommend you run regular gas in these engines. I've done a lot of testing, and if you run mid-grade or high-grade fuel, you're going to see your economy approve enough to cover the extra cost of that premium fuel. So sometimes it just doesn't pay to be cheap. In any event, the 5.3 will run on regular fuel. The 5.3 tends to run very cool. I don't know what GM did with these LTs, but they seem to run cooler than the LSs, and the LSs seem to run cooler than the small blocks. So at the end of the day, you're running basically the same transmission as a 6.2. The install labor is almost the same. We do have to run a couple of extra coolers on the, on the LT1s. So the cost is not that much less. But you're going to be in the mid to high 20s with an LT5.3, where you're going to be in the low 30s with an LT1. And what you get for your money is a great value, even in today's world, because you have plenty of power to enjoy your JK. Go up those mountain grades with ease, with the air conditioning on. Tow your trailer. Cruise at 80 miles an hour without the worry of a Prius passing you. You have the longevity of a V8. Now, I haven't run one of these engines for hundreds of thousands of miles. I've seen LTs with hundreds of thousands of miles on them. But I will say that we have a lot of LTs out there, and the combined mileage is easily over 100,000 miles. And we're not seeing massive failures. We're not even seeing minor failures. Now, we are seeing things like fuel pumps go bad and a coil go bad and things like that. But as far as the doom and gloom from some of the guys that can't support the LT, we're not seeing that at all. So if you have a light to medium weight JK, you're not running 40s, you're not running at high altitude, you're not pulling a 6,000 pound trailer, take a hard look at the LT 5.3. They are available again to us. Combine that with a 10 speed transmission. Yeah, you could go with the 8 speed if you want, but realistically the 10 speed has now proven itself to us. It's strong enough and those extra couple of gears do help just a little bit, especially with the smaller displacement engine. The eight speed still does have a place and that is in the really high performance engines like a supercharged engine or a guy that's gonna go out and beat on his JK with 42 inch tires. So while the LT 5.3 may not be the best when it comes to maximum horsepower, maximum torque, zero to 60, when it comes to an overall engine, it is a jack of all trades. It's going to get you where you want to go in style. You're not going to struggle. It can run on the lower grade fuels if you want to, but you heard my caveat about that. It's going to go the distance. It's going to have longevity, not like a supercharged engine. It's going to have excellent drivability. You're not going to have to worry about the high RPM power band. Like I said, it's just a jack of all trades and it's a really good value. So we're going to take this LT 5.3 early model JK up to the trail and we'll see you soon. Out here on the trail, it's triple digits. We're in a black JK. We got an LT 5.3. It's running, it's running really cool, actually. You can see we got our additional transmission cooler. The original early JKs didn't have one in front of the AC condenser. It was at the bottom of the AC condenser behind the bumper, and it was not very efficient. I don't know what intake they have on this. Let's take a look. So you can see that we got an LT1 intake on this. I think we're doing that on pretty much all of them now. Motec battery tray, this does have PSC hydraulics. You can really hear that fan winding up, but it's a hot day. It's a black JK. 
and we just came up a couple of mile trail. You can hear this fan modulate, which means it's pulse width modulated. It's going from zero to 100%. We don't have a two speed fan. We don't have a pulse width modulated fan fool to think it's running at one speed or another. It's being controlled by a lot of different things. Intake air temp, transmission temp, AC pressure, coolant temp, vehicle speed. So you can just hear this fan moving all over the place. 